Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Better Rides, Better Riders. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. Snow Tracks has done a number of different contests and giveaways over the years, and we've always been very pleased with the response we got from the snowmobiling community tallying up thousands and thousands of entries. But apparently, more of you want a piece of Tucker than anything we've ever offered. The Do You Want a Piece of Tucker contest was unveiled this past summer at the Heydays Outdoor Grass Drag Swap Meet and Consumer Trade Show in Minnesota. Entering your ballot got you a chance to win Tucker's Pro Cross 800 race replica sled with the serial number 2 and an all expense paid trip to Thief River Falls to the Arctic Cat Factory to ride with Tucker and the crew from Snow Tracks TV. The Hibbert name is one of the most recognizable in the industry. Tucker's dad Kirk is a multi-time I-500 winner and a snowcross legend. Tucker himself has pretty much annihilated the snowcross scene in the US for the last decade and is a six times X Games snowcross gold medalist. Obviously, riding with him would be a huge incentive to enter the contest, but winning a limited edition race replica Pro Cross 800, one of only 500, and serial number two, personally signed by Tucker himself, well apparently that pushes the rest of you who hadn't entered yet right over the edge. Over 34,000 entries were received for this draw. That's nearly six times more than any other draw we've ever done. And after all the ballots were received and checked for eligibility, a single name was randomly drawn. My name's Doug Bay, and uh, I live in a little town called Mount Jewett with my wife, Mikkel, and my beautiful daughter, George. It was a few months ago I saw the uh, Everyone Wants a Piece of Tucker contest forms and, and I was, you know, really excited about moving to a new home with my wife and daughter. And we were real close to a, the main snowmobile trails in our area. And of course with, with work and everything else going on, I don't have a lot of time to ride, but I also don't have a lot of extra money to be throwing around and buying snowmobiles. So I thought, well, hey, it's worth a shot, you know. Uh, Maybe I'd be the one to get a piece of Tucker Hibbert. It was totally unexpected. I mean, I was almost wondering which friend was trying to prank me on the phone, you know, when, when I first got the phone call. I went from riding nothing to the absolute top of the line and second one that came off of the line. Tucker actually rode from his house to the Arctic Cat factory to meet up with Doug, hand over the keys to his new sled, and then go for a ride around Thief River. From the moment he stepped in the room, it was clear to everyone, Tucker Hibbert is not your average racing celebrity. You know, it's important to me to, to be able to do things like this so that uh, the fans can feel and, and understand that, you know, I truly am thankful for their support and everything. And I think it's just important to give back to the people that have you know been there supporting me and um, get them involved and make them feel like they're a part of my racing and, and my race team. Well, this sled is special because it's, uh, you know, the first signature replica sled that I've that I've done with Arctic Cat, and we wanted to do something a little bit more than just, you know, put my number on it or my name on the side of the sled. You know, some of the cool things are the Fox uh, Kashima coated Evol's uh, drippy seat cover, my, my windshield, the same windshield I run on my race sled, hand guards, my number plates that I've been running for you know, five or six years now. A lot of cool things that people can, you know, get on the sled and ride it and feel like they're at the track. Once we got Doug settled down after the unveil, it was time to head out for a ride. Now this was Doug's first ride in a snowmobile in about three years, and it was Tucker's first ride in Thief in many, many years. When you think about riding with somebody professional at, at his level, it's, you know, how, do, how does that work? And does he even enjoy that type of riding that I do? I might have been a little bit nervous about riding with Tucker in the very beginning, like before I met him. But once I met him and talked to him a little bit, it was, it, I mean, the butterflies were gone. And of course, I think most of that had to do with, you know, the, the right hand being on the throttle of a new sled too. So uh, once we got going, I, I, nerves were gone and I was just back in the seat of a sled, which I haven't been in, in at least three years now. So it feels really good. Crazy. Doug is an awesome guy, just, you know, I mean, you can see uh, his passion for snowmobiling. He's, he's so excited about uh, winning the sled and, and really just about having the, the opportunity to ride again. 
it's fun to see that, you know, I think for a lot of us that ride every day and something that we maybe take for granted and don't really realize how how uh, unique of a sport and how, how much fun it is to get out there and ride. And this is an awesome sport and we're pretty fortunate to be able to do it. I think the most fun part of this day was watching how Doug reacted to snowmobiling. His last sled was an oldie and wasn't very fast. So seeing his response to his new sled with all of its power, suspension and handling was really refreshing. Being able to ride with Doug today and, and get to know him has been great. And it just, you know, it's just another reminder of how how fortunate we are to be in an awesome sport and for me to be able to go out and compete and, and entertain these people and, and uh, motivate them to go out and ride, things like that. It's really cool and uh, hopefully we can do more, more events like this in the future and just kind of keep people excited about it because it's a lot of fun. By the end of the day, the three of us were pretty worn out. From the excitement of the unveil to the fairly spirited 80 mile ride around Thief River Falls, we were about done, but it was still pretty clear that Doug was resting in a state of disbelief. I've been on my heels the whole time, just set back because of it. I'm not used to any of this. Uh, this is all foreign to me, being the center of attention and, and it's now having a sled and Arctic Cat gave me a jacket and bibs and it's just, I'm toasty warm out in the middle of Minnesota and, and couldn't be happier, you know, ear to ear grin. Obviously, you're gonna say the sled is the best part, but aside from that, I got to meet a lot of really cool people and a lot of people that I would have never encountered um, otherwise, you know, so that's, that's kind of really neat too. One of the foremost memories I'll have of this experience is, is getting to see and meet and talk to and shake hands with people that, that put all this together. I mean, that make contests like this happen impossible for guys like me. And then also make sleds that ride like this. I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's almost an art to be able to design something like that and, and see it working and be on it and riding it. And now it's mine too, so even better, right? In case you hadn't noticed, Skidoo is voracious in their protection of number one market share. To prove the point, they've taken a sled we tested last year on snow tracks, the MXZX 600 E-Tech with our motion, and made significant changes to it, when quite frankly, we didn't think the sled could get much better. Okay, so no OEM makes the perfect sled yet. And for sure, every sled can be improved. But the basic Skidoo XP 600 E-Tech with our motion is a formidable player in the most popular segment in the sport. This snowmobile deals up class-leading lightweight, the best ride in the industry from any 120-inch platform, and the hands-down most sophisticated power plant in the sport of snowmobiling. With these kind of credentials, how does Skidoo materially improve such a formidable player in the 600 class? Here's how. They completely reinvent the bodywork package in an effort to improve ergos, comfort, warmth, and even engine and clutch performance. For model year 2013, the MXZ's platform gets a new handle. It's now called the XS. This rethink of the XP addresses just about every gripe we've had in the past. The first gripe, in our minds, was the need for a decent sized storage compartment. Now a new behind the windshield trunk allows you to take along spare gloves, goggles, and other important items. The new high mounted compartment actually stays warm from migrating engine heat. Nice. In terms of wind protection, you could say the XP bodywork was, well, cold. The XS bodywork is designed to provide a literal pocket of protection for the rider, even with the low windshield. There is a noticeable improvement in warmth on your knees, as well as the absence of buffeting at lake speeds. If you've ever tried to store a spare belt on the XP, you would agree with us that the location for a spare belt was bizarre. The new XS has what we believe the best spare belt storage rack ever designed. The belt fits snugly into a pressed in profile in the all new belt guard, along with a belt key and a wrench. There's more going on with the XS than just a new belt guard. The management of underhood air has been tweaked to provide a 30% reduction in both belt and clutch heat and to ensure the entire engine bay remains cool. As well, 
The intake air inlets have been repositioned to ensure positive cold air charging of the air box. That about covers off the new XS architecture, but what about the bones of the XS? Is it still a class leading platform? Skidoo's E-Tech 600 is the hottest 600 two-stroke in 2013, delivering not just class leading, but industry leading fuel economy, regularly posting 20 miles per gallon. E-Tech is not a flash in the pan technology, but the hands down most sophisticated fuel delivery system ever fitted to a two-stroke engine. Skidoo doesn't let anyone mow their grass, so when Polaris introduced their revolutionary ProRide external shock skid four years ago, Skidoo responded with R-Motion last year. R-Motion is an externally adjustable, shock in skid, rising rate design that provides the best ride in the industry. We can say much more about R-Motion from a handling standpoint. The beauty of the design is its ability to produce over 15 inches of travel by collapsing the skid further into the tunnel without raising ride height one inch. This attention to keeping CG low produces trail handling consistent with Skidoo's former SC series skids. Torque induced inside ski lift is limited by the inherent low CG while subtle rear to front coupling contributes to well controlled, satisfying weight transfer. Knowing the perfect sled is yet to be built, what don't we like about the XS? We feel this sled is nervous at trail speeds and has a vague on center feel. We'd also like to see steering effort reduced on hard pack. Those are our remaining gripes. This MXZ's ergos are superb, providing the rider with a comfortable perch, allowing for easy sitting to standing transitions. The gauge package and handlebar switchgear lead the industry with tons of data available in both digital and analog format and a plethora of combinations. The left side switch cluster is easy to use and intuitive once the owner becomes familiar with control placement. One more thing we have to praise the SX for, the universal use of electric start. The new XS bodywork does not have a location for a recoil rope. We are applauding. When it's all said and done, Skidoo continues to lead the industry in virtually all areas of competitive comparison. Beyond this, there's one more thing the XS carries to the top of this segment, less weight than any of its competitors. Remember this, I've said it before and I'll say it again, light is right. When you say Eagle River, one thing comes to mind, the Eagle River Derby. And this season marks the 50th anniversary of the legendary event that has forever changed the sport we know and love. Well, it started in 1964, and uh, there were some area businessmen in town here that uh, got together and they wanted to do something to get people to the Northwoods. So they started the first Derby, which was on Dollar Lake, a little bit east of here. And uh, the first year, I think they had about 700 to 1,000 people show up. They'd had a second race on the lake out there and then they had over 3,000 people and the ice couldn't hold all the cars and people, so they knew they had to do something different. So they moved it to this facility. From there on, it's just grown to where we are today. It started out with tents and now we're in hot seats and corporate suites and jumbotrons, so it's come a long ways. It was so big and so popular, it, it, it immediately made Eagle River the snowmobile capital of the world. And it's not only that what it's done for Eagle River, but the surrounding communities because of the impact and the people and the industry. This is really where snowmobile racing developed and started. If you've heard of Eagle River, that's not really a big surprise. But if you actually know where it is on a map, that's a different story. Because as you may have not expected, Eagle River is far from population near the northernmost tip of the Wisconsin border. This used to be a two-day event. You know, now it's a 10-day event. And, uh, we started out with our vintage weekend, uh, which we did last weekend here, and uh, we had over 900 entries, and uh, we ran over 150 races in a day. When vintage first started, uh, it, was, it was like maybe 10, 20 sleds, okay? And we would race them on the same weekend as Derby weekend, which was a two day, and then when it went to three day, and then it went to four day. And the vintage kept growing and growing along with the popularity of it. 
And about 13 years ago, it got so big that we couldn't physically get it in in four, four days, the vintage and the modern stuff. So we separated the week. We had the vintage the first weekend and the regular ones the second weekend. So it's a 10-day event. Thank God that vintage came back and it came back so strong. And uh, last weekend, I'll tell you, if you'd seen this place, it was, uh, it, it, it's like a normal derby weekend. It's with that, that many people and close to a thousand entries, which is a, a lot of entries. If Mother Nature cooperates, uh, I think the industry is going to stay strong. And I can tell you the derby is going to grow because between Chuck, our, our, uh, the owner, my son, and our general manager, Todd Ackerberg, Chuck comes up with these ideas, and Todd gets the work done, and I do the complaining. But it's a pretty good combination. But I think uh, after they see what's going to happen this weekend and what we got planned, there's a big future for Eagle River. And it's going to be around for another 50 years, I'll guarantee you that. Eagle River has an unmatched history in our sport as the snowmobile capital of the world. And while racers and sleds change from year to year, the Derby runs strong with a new breed of vintage racers who are determined to never let the past be forgotten. Each season on snow tracks, we test the latest and greatest sleds from the big four manufacturers. But we do realize that not everybody rides the latest iron, and that there's a lot of really good snowmobiles out there that are just a little bit older, and they still deliver great ride and handling, but they might require a little updating from time to time. One of the most popular sleds from the late 90s to the early 2000s would have to be the Skidoo ZX platform. I raced these in the glory days and have nothing but great memories. These sleds are exceptionally nimble and feature near perfect suspension for their day. Finding a low mile used one is a very hard thing to do as many are up and over 10 to 15,000 miles. When you hit these kind of numbers, replacing parts is inevitable. And while tracks, carbides, ball joints and various other parts are the norm, a lot of the times what's underneath the hood gets overlooked. In particular, the exhaust system. A manufacturer's stock exhaust is designed to be quiet and retain a certain amount of heat to help burn off excess emissions. However, over time, these parts wear out. You may not see it from the outside, but the inside of an exhaust canister becomes burned out. The head pipe on a two-stroke is very important, but generally doesn't require replacement. The muffler or canister, on the other hand, does, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Stock exhaust canisters are packed with fiberglass packing to help keep sound emissions low, but after years of riding, the packing will burn out and the exhaust will become much louder. While some areas do not allow exhaust modifications of any kind, there are many that do, and replacing your exhaust can with a new aftermarket system can net you impressive improvement. This direct replacement canister is made by MBRP. It's smaller, it's lighter, it makes the sled sound crisper, and it enhances the performance. MBRP is a performance exhaust manufacturer and have applications for almost every sled you can imagine right back to the 90s. Their product is designed and built by motorsports enthusiasts and are not just noisemakers. Thanks to the clamshell design of older sleds, the process is very simple. And at the end, we have a much cleaner underhood engine compartment and a sled that's probably close to 10 pounds lighter. In an industry that's focused on removing excess weight, this is a great way to update your old sled and shed some pounds. As I stated earlier, MBRP's canisters are direct bolt-ons. No modifications, no monkeying around. And in most cases, reinstallation of the new can is much easier thanks to the smaller size and reduced weight. Before I head out on the trail, I want to install a set of MBRP shock covers as well. On older sleds, the shock shafts have seen a lot of abuse, so any extra protection from pitting will help. However, installing covers like these from day one will net you much better shock life in the long run. Performance gains are always what people install an exhaust canister for, and our 600 carb Rotax will no doubt enjoy a much freer flowing exhaust with way fewer restrictions. Actual numbers are hard to pinpoint as each motor is different and would need to be dynoed to track the exact horsepower advantage. I found the most noticeable improvement was through the mid-range where the two-stroke motor really feels, well, pipey, and the power from this 600 felt far more crisp and responsive. After installing the can, the sound coming from this sled is way more pleasing to the ear. The motor is way happier and from about 4,500 RPM on is where I noticed the most gain. Was top end speed increased? Possibly a little, but it was the response through the turns and acceleration out of corners that truly delivered the most noticeable improvement. 
And while the exhaust note was not much louder than a stock burned out canister, it was far more pleasing to the ear. While there are lots of updates that you can do to your old sled, most won't net you any kind of performance advantage over your stock setup. But installing an MBRP exhaust canister will give you a reduction in weight and increase in performance, and in my books, there's just no downside to that equation. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. Yamaha, snowmobiles built for the real world. That's the Yamaha Advantage. And by Go Ride Ontario. There's no place like this.